Hey guys, what's up? Remember that little series I did about a year and a half ago called Hidden Gem or Hidden Trash? Yeah, I bet you do. And if you don't, link in the description. Anyway, today I decided to do a compilation of the 10 most interesting but also the funniest JRPGs I chose for that particular series. So therefore, welcome to my top 10 hidden gem or hidden trash JRPGs. I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you enjoyed this compilation. Let's begin! Our first contender is Shining Soul, the reboot of the Shining series after the original developers of Shining Force stopped making them. Sega still retained the IP and wanted to continue with a new line of role-playing games. This exclusive on the Game Boy Advance was the pioneer of the idea, so let's find out the positive and the negative about it. The game offers a small adventure with cool visuals for a 32-bit console. I gotta admit the sprites are nice, as it quickly reminds me of the lovely Super Nintendo era. It has an interesting class system, letting you choose what kind of character you'll play as, with a colorful customization. It has a basic story about ancient evil in the form of a dark dragon, nothing original but charming nonetheless. This is a quest-driven game that plays in an isometric view as you go around many diverse and nice-looking areas. Overall, a reboot that definitely took the series into a different direction. So the positive stands as nice pixel art, neat class system and customization, and simple but cute graphics. Shining Soul's battle system is as clunky and boring as it looks right now in the video. Hit detection is decent but the action gets really old after the first minutes. Plus, it's just full of difficulty spikes thanks to its repetitive nature. Its uninspiring gameplay mechanics involve a very tedious item system that is just convoluted. I mentioned it was a quest-driven adventure, but most of its quests revolve around going to the same areas over and over again. Music is very forgettable, and sometimes it can become an ear sore for how lame it is. Nothing else shines in this game besides the small, almost irrelevant positive aspects I mentioned. So the negative is as follows. Mediocre battle system, convoluted item menu, repetitive gameplay, boring quests, and lame music. Shining Soul tried to take a classic series of strategy RPGs into an action franchise, but it ended up being a catastrophe with its first entry. Therefore, I deem this game as hidden trash. Labyrinth of Refrain, Coven of Dusk Released for modern systems a couple of years ago, this Nippon Ichi software game went under a lot of people's radars. It is another first-person dungeon crawler and turn-based RPG. So let's find out the positive and the aspects of it right now. Being an NIS game, you expect it to be full of comedy, weirdness, over-the-top silliness, and fan service. Labyrinth of Refrain correctly delivers all of that. So as I said before, it's a dungeon crawler in first person, which means you'll be navigating through a lot of vastly different but cool-looking areas. These types of games tend to be brutally hard since the beginning, but this one strays from that. It really feels balanced most of the time, Battles are played in turns, and they're easy to understand, leaving unnecessarily complicated aspects aside. I notice the character variety when it comes to creation, and the main protagonist, especially the witch, seem very likable and interesting. There is something very unique about the gameplay itself that separates it slightly from other RPGs of its genre. So the positive features are as follows. Good old Nippon Ichi software feel, interesting and easy to get into, nice battle mechanics, funny looking design, and a very cool main character. These types of games are always very niche for a reason. Traversing through these long areas in first person while getting random encounters is often a pain. It's not that tedious here, but the more you advance, the more repetitive it becomes. Music is funny and there are some cool themes here and there, but you sometimes don't pay attention to it. 
Even though the story focuses on your main playable character, everybody else in your party has obviously no personality. The story never gets old as it is pretty funny and somewhat intriguing, but its cliches and some characters can be utterly annoying at times. In conclusion, the game can get very repetitive, with some lame-ass hair types here and there, and certain features just feel very generic. Other than that, Labyrinth of Refrain is a pretty decent RPG, and it might be a good entry for beginners into dungeon crawlers. Therefore, I deem this game as a hidden gem. Izuna, the legend of the unemployed ninja? Just like any of the games in that genre, this is also very hard. Time to find out the good and the bad about it. Izuna is a very funny comedy, one that swarms with charisma in a colorful anime-styled world. The protagonist herself is very interesting to follow, especially since she's well unemployed. Roaming around the town feels well-paced, as you get acquainted to it rather fast. In terms of music, it's nothing special, but some tunes are good nonetheless. Now, as a roguelike, it definitely delivers what it has to, as you go around exploring the dungeons, moving while the enemies move too, and finding items that you need to manage strategically. What I like about the gameplay mechanics is that they're friendly. Dungeons aren't swarming with monsters, Isuna can recover HP quickly, the pacing as you advance from one area to another is balanced. In other words, being a roguelike makes it very hard, but with enough time to get used to it and enjoy it. Positive features are very funny characters, charismatic story, friendly gameplay mechanics, and some catchy music themes. Roguelike RPGs are niche, and I mean very niche. Given their repetitive nature, it's a genre that automatically has something negative with every single title. Izuna is very friendly, however, but it just feels shallow in some areas with lame difficulty spikes. It can be a bit of a pain to fight the bosses, since you have to find them or encounter them in a convenient location, so the strategies can be convoluted sometimes. Losing in a dungeon, at any time, means losing all your items and going back to level 1. But hey, that's every role like RPG for ya. Negative features are, the game can feel very repetitive, boss fights can be annoying sometimes, and difficulty spikes are just weird. Izuna is a very fun adventure, too bad it has a lot of ups and downs like any roguelike RPG. In conclusion, this is a pretty solid and funny game, but only for those who enjoy the genre. Therefore, and with that in mind, I deem this game as a hidden gem. The next contender is Monster Kingdom Jewel Summoner, a turn-based RPG about capturing and training monsters. Sounds familiar? It's a PSP game with a somewhat confusing name, so let's find out if it's any good. One of the first things that immediately stands out in this game is the voice acting. It has a great cast full of the usual good actors. Story premise is really interesting, revealing it's a classic anime-style role-playing game, contrary to what you would normally think for its name. Exploration controls nice in a top-down view, so moving around feels natural. Battles are random and turn-based. You can have three active party members, each with their own set of monsters to summon. They do all the fighting in screens that can split like this. So it's called Jewel Summoner because you need to weaken the monsters first, so you can capture them with a jewel. Positive aspects are as follows. Interesting premise, cool turn-based system, great voice cast and neat character design. Regrettably, even though the premise is interesting, the story soon turns into a sleep fest. Characters are heavily stereotyped, and their dialogues aren't fun at all. It had potential, to be honest, but the writing was just poorly done. It also has difficulty spikes like crazy that can be utterly annoying. Reason why is because it starts off extremely easy, but the first major boss battle kicks your ass rather quickly. So there you go, to grind or to try to get more monsters, but the monotonous combat feels like a burden. 
I mean the battle system is good, but some battles just take too long and so it grows old very soon. Negative aspects are boring story, uninteresting characters, annoying difficulty spikes and monotonous grinding. Jewel Summoner had a lot of potential, with better writing and character development, it would have had an interesting story. Take out those difficulty spikes too and it's honestly not that bad. However, there's no middle point in this video. It might not be one of the worst RPGs on the PSP, but still I deem this game as hidden trash. Originally released on the PS Vita, then remade for most modern systems, the Caligula effect came up as a surprise. It has a historical name in its title, even though the game doesn't seem to have any real relation to it. In its own terms, it is yet another strange contender for this list. So let's discover the positive and the negative aspects about it. The name of the game is enough to awaken your curiosity. You then start playing, quickly thrown into a somewhat dark and bizarre story. People seem to gain access to a virtual reality within a high school, but forced to live there indefinitely. I gotta admit, that is a very alluring premise. Its visuals can overcome some blurry aspects, but in the end, character and graphic design is stereotypical from Japanese animation. A main feature is exploring the areas, finding out clues about certain people or certain events, and its battle mechanics are turn-based in a curious attempt to an original layout. Positive characteristics are a very solid premise, interesting and unique concept, and an original battle system. Even though the main plot revolves around an awesome idea, it eventually fades into the depths of stupidity. It just goes forward to lame-ass cliches and idle bullshit. In fact, I never understood if they were criticizing the J-pop culture or rendering tribute to it. A pseudo-psychological story done wrong. The game takes place in the school and during the first hours, you'll be stuck there, going from different floors to different classrooms. They all look the same, of course, so being trapped here for a while is outrageously tedious. You do all this exploration while listening to the same horrible song over and over and over again. When you go into battle, the song is still there, but now with lyrics, which are annoying as you try to concentrate. I mean it since the combat mechanics are convoluted and sometimes you don't even know what you're doing. Negative characteristics are, story starts off really good but it soon turns into ass. Terrible music, very repetitive exploration and a battle system that, while still original and interesting, it makes no sense at times. The Caligula effect tried so damn hard to be unique and appealing, but it only pleased a very small audience, the one that somehow managed to get into it. The PS Vita version, digital only, is the one I played, so I don't know if the remake is better, but I highly doubt it. Therefore, I deem this game as hidden trash! Brandish Originally released on the Super Nintendo and then remade for the PSP on a digital format. It was developed by Falcom and it acts as a top-down view dungeon crawler. So let's find out the positive and the negative about it. The story in this game is quite good actually, about a sorceress seeking revenge on a swordsman who's laid her master. An accident leads them to the ruins of a kingdom and they must escape separately. Helping the sorceress or not also influences the ending of the game. Now Brandish is an action RPG that gives you the impression of being a roguelike, but in reality it's not. Yes, you are locked into four directions to move and attack, but it's not made in turns, instead everything occurs in real time. It does share some similarities with roguelike RPGs, like finding items to equip and weapon durability. However, it's more friendly than that. Basically, you'll see puzzles of having to find the key to unlock a door and so on. Bosses will be tough, but fun at the same time, as they all have a different way to attack you. Meaning there's also a different way to defeat them. Brandish has one of the most sexualized female characters ever in a JRPG, 
Super Nintendo version, she was censored, PSP was not. Don't let that bother you, as Della is a twisted and dark antagonist that actually, in the PSP remake, became a playable character. Yep, there are entire missions with her, but her route is harder than the original. So the positive is, awesome premise, challenging gameplay, funny but cool antagonist, a remake with one extra playable character and interesting boss battles. I praised the story before, right? Unfortunately, we barely see a focus on this plot and the character development is almost non-existent. Some scenes are really interesting to watch, but they will only leave you wanting for more. Since your character can only move in four directions, controls are then somewhat clunky. Some enemies will attack you from the back or the rear, and that can be a total drag. The worst aspect of this game, though, is the puzzles. Going from point A to point B just to get a damn key or an item and then having to return to point A? Well, that's like the entire game in a nutshell. So just imagine how repetitive it is. Lastly, graphics and music are nice, but they don't really stand out. So the negative is lack of plot slash character development, highly repetitive gameplay and some clunky controls here and there. To be honest, I've seen people reject these kinds of games for the aforementioned reasons. Let's just say it's not for everybody. In my personal opinion though, it's a fun RPG with positive aspects that are good enough for me. Therefore, I deem this game as a hidden gem. Next contender is Shining Force Neo. After leaving Sega, original developers of Shining Force joined Nintendo. Sega, however, kept the rights to the series, so they started turning them into action RPGs. Neo was the first Diablo clone of this kind, so let's find out the good and the bad about it. Combine the Diablo battle system and Musou a la Dynasty Warriors and you'll meet Shining Force Neo. Just beating the crap out of everything and everyone can feel satisfying at times. You have a variety of creatures, characters and enemies, so it delivers an extensive adventure. I think for PS2, middle-of-the-road RPG graphics and music were decent. If anything, the game does offer a unique perspective on the Shining series. Now, it's not just kill all monsters to get the job done. Sometimes, different objectives will be presented here, such as defending certain places, people, etc. So the challenge is there, considering it's also grindy, making it a tough action RPG to play, especially with some of the bosses. Positive features are as follows. Fun hack and slash action, challenging boss battles, and a variety of mission objectives. Let's talk first about the story. I'll say it outright. It's bad. Characters, specifically the protagonist, are often unlikable and quite moronic. To be honest, this Max guy is one of the lamest heroes I've ever seen in a JRPG. He's just the usual lazy var dragging all kinds of stereotypes around him. Sure, I said that Diablo-style action was fun, but controls feel clunky and clumsy. Often you'll be forced to abuse healing items because the battles can easily get out of control. And trust me, that just isn't fun anymore. The difficulty spikes are incredibly annoying because of the lack of checkpoints or save areas. Oh, and your party members will give you a false sense of trust when sometimes they'll feel totally useless. I know I said also the graphics and music were acceptable, and they are, but in reality you can just forget about them because both the story and the battle system are beyond mediocre. Negative features are as follows. Terrible story, terrible characters, nerve-wracking difficulty spikes, clunky controls, and mediocre presentation. In my opinion, the next Diablo clone, Shining Force EXA, did everything much better, so I strongly suggest you play that instead. Yep, you guessed it, I deem this game as hidden trash. Ever Oasis, it is an action RPG created by Koichi Ishii from the Mana series. It's supposedly a spiritual successor of them, so let's find out the positive and the negative about it.
However, Oasis offers a solid adventure with tons of charm and colors in a beautiful world. It revolves around many gameplay mechanics, all of them being actually simple to understand. Building a town around an oasis, attracting shop owners and residents, gathering materials for everything to grow, doing side quests, etc. You think a game like this with so many features will be convoluted, but it isn't. The action is basic as is the exploring, with some puzzles here and there, but nothing rather tedious. Many party members can join you in these adventures, so it offers variety in races and team strategy. Music is nice and it enchants the player while going around on every single quest. Overall, it's a fantastic RPG that truthfully succeeded the Mana series to an extent. So the positive aspects are interesting and addictive gameplay mechanics, easy to get into, very charming story and world, simple but fun battle system. All games with world-building features often involve micromanagement, and while this isn't exactly what I would call negative, as it is very easy to understand, it can sometimes become tiresome. The repetitive nature of the quests going to the same places over and over again can also turn down the excitement. Graphics are great for a 3DS title, but they could have done a better job for a game that's not even three years old. So the negative stands in, micromanagement can be tedious at times, the game can feel repetitive, and the graphics, although beautiful, aren't that great. However, the negative aspects of this joyful adventure are nothing really that important. It's very fun to play, with its lovely addictive nature. Therefore, I deem this game as a hidden gem. Initially a PS4 exclusive until its release for PC on December 2017, Omega Quintet went under a lot of people's radar. Idea Factory and Compile Hard were heavily involved, but strangely a new developer called Galapagos RPG made it. So let's find out the positive and the aspect of this turn-based RPG. Omega Quintet is yet another game with small visual novel elements, but honestly I thought they were like any other compile hard RPG. It has a very cool battle system, turn-based, relying on constant fluctuation of combos and awesome skills. It's fast, well polished and therefore very addictive to play. I thought the graphics were going to look like crap, but they were surprisingly decent. Its overall gameplay mechanics rely on quests and area navigation increasing the variety to some extent. In the end, Omega Quintet attempted a slight approach to a different compile hard idea, and in my opinion, it succeeded. So the positive is, excellent battle system, decent visuals and interesting areas to navigate through. The story, however, in Omega Quintet is probably among the absolute worst I've ever seen in a JRPG. These companies aren't exactly known nowadays for having great stories, but sometimes they're fun and interesting. Here it's all about a little girl becoming an idol and doing missions all together with other uninteresting and extremely stereotyped idols. I said the battle system is great, and I still mean it, but if only the horrendous voice acting didn't ruin it, in both English and Japanese, characters will repeat the same lines or words over and over and over again. Yeah, in that loud, horribly sharp, little girlish sound. This then turns the battles, ironically, annoying. I thought the music was ridiculous, it didn't bother me that much, but its style is something I rarely enjoy. Graphics were good, yeah, I said that. But I omitted the sparkling colors and embarrassing character design. If you're really into the idol culture, and I mean really into it, because it's overly present, you maybe will enjoy this game. Otherwise, I strongly suggest you stay the hell away from it. Yep, you guessed it. In conclusion, I deem this RPG as hidden trash. Zanki Zero, Last Beginning. Developed by Spike Chunsoft, this weird-ass game was released with some unique features and controversial bits, 
It is a dungeon crawler in first person, but with action and simulation elements. So let's find out the positive and the negative about this strange contender. Zanki Zero is highly original, and that can often be seen as a double-edged sword. The good aspects are the totally crazy and senseless ideas put into it. For example, it has a really interesting beginning that hooks you immediately. The story then progresses into a deserted island, supposedly after the apocalypse, leaving only 8 people alive. They are, of course, your playable characters. Moving on, you find out they can get old and die, and then be reborn in uh, an arcade machine? Yeah. Of all the extremely weird things this game has, I thought that was actually funny. Exploring the island allows you to discover new areas and buildings, and that can be pretty exciting. Getting to know these characters, learning how to be resourceful, and unraveling its mysterious plot truly compels you to keep playing it. So the positive sums up in original concept, intriguing story, and a variety in gameplay mechanics. With a pretty unique game like this, you would expect a very original battle system. Alas, it's just first-person action as in a roguelike. You make one move and the enemy makes one. Sometimes you can just beat the crap out of them in no time, sometimes it takes forever. Combat mechanics, therefore, are kinda lame. As any dungeon crawler, some areas and dungeons are really long and that can be often very repetitive. The game starts off easy, especially since the English localization had a lower difficulty option. Then it gets hard, but in a very frustrating level with some puzzle solving mechanics. In other words, the negative is as follows. Uninteresting battle system, confusing micromanagement and some convoluted mechanics. To be honest, Zanki Zero is a highly interesting game, and its positive aspects, spawning originality, make you overlook some of the negative stuff. Therefore, and barely, I deem this game as a hidden gem. Alright guys, that's it, I hope you enjoyed this little compilation I did. Now, will this series ever come back? I kinda want it to come back, but the truth is... Um, Four out of the six episodes I did didn't do very well in views, in fact they actually failed. I think the series itself was kind of niche, you know, a lot of people weren't that interested. So maybe with this video the interest will go up, maybe, just maybe, I don't know, I can't make any promises. I do want the series to come back, so all I can promise is that I'll think about it. That's all for today people, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!